To be honest, I don't think I remember when exactly playing video games stopped being fun. Whether it was before or after coding, I'm never gonna know. Now I'm assuming that if you clicked on this video, it's because you're someone who is either looking to start coding or someone who just does not find video games fun anymore. They're hollow. So today I'm gonna tell you the exact way that I replaced gaming with coding. And near the end of the video, I'm gonna go over some practical strategies that you can implement that have helped me replace gaming with coding, which in kind of a paradoxical way, actually make me enjoy video games much more. Now I've been a gamer my entire life. So when gaming stopped being fun for me, it was concerning. But for me, I knew leaving high school that I wanted to develop apps. I wanted to build websites. I wanted to learn how to code. And thus is how I found the thing in life that I can do for hours on end and just completely lose track of time. Coding makes me forget to eat sometimes, makes me forget to sleep sometimes, makes me forget to text my girlfriend back. But the point is, I had finally found something in life that I could just throw hours into because I enjoyed it so much, forgetting track of even the most basic things because I was so immersed in building a new cool tool or project just simply because I enjoyed it so much. Gaming, on the other hand, became hollow. Games of Call of Duty, League of Legends, TFT, Hunt Showdown, uh, they just didn't have the same charm as they used to. Whether it was grinding for hours for a new cosmetic on a battle pass, or just trying to actually go and level up or rank up in some competitive game. That drive to rank up, to, to reach that next level, it was gone. But surprisingly, I actually knew why. By the way, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you find this kind of content interesting and want more like it, you'd be doing me a huge solid by hitting the subscribe button. But now no more gatekeeping, I'll, I'll tell you why the video games weren't fun. So why were video game achievements no longer fun? Why did gaming suddenly feel so hollow? Well, to put it simply, when I became an adult, I finally realized that a lot of these achievements, a lot of the progress in these games wasn't really that special. It wasn't really that worth it, you know? Unless you're a competitive League of Legends player and you make your entire salary having a really high rank, or, you know, you're a competitive Call of Duty player that goes and competes in tournaments. Just spending all these hours to grind for these achievements in games just wasn't worth it anymore. You see, I remember when my friends got the Dark Matter camo on Call of Duty Black Ops 3. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's essentially a really cool weapon skin that you could get, but to get it, you have to do a whole bunch of really, you know, painful challenges, and it just, it takes a really long time, and it's really difficult. But if you can get through all of that, you get rewarded with this really cool camo, and anybody who sees that you have that camo knows that you put the work in because you can't buy it. So it was kind of like a status symbol. So for my friends and I, you know, for, all these people that are in the eighth grade, which is how old I was when Call of Duty Black Ops 3 came out, having dark matter camo was like a status symbol. It was a trophy. It was a way to say, I put in the effort to get this crazy achievement. But, and this should be pretty obvious, as an adult, people aren't as impressed by the cosmetics you earn in video games. Doesn't matter how hard you worked for it. And not only that, they were no longer meaningful. They were no longer satisfying. The road to actually get there was not worth the payoff. And what was an achievement that I was actually proud of? Building apps, building software, seeing someone have a problem, building a system, building a tool, building a website, building something and directly solving that problem and also getting paid for it. This, this was my new game, the game of business. Possible to win, but impossible to beat. So practically though, how did I actually replace gaming with coding? Well, to put it simply, when you're a kid, you get home from school and you play video games. And for a lot of people, as they mature into adulthood, that doesn't really change. They get home from work and then you come home and the video games are your downtime. So to shift it from gaming to coding, you have to replace that in gaming with coding. But you can't just completely go cold turkey on gaming. You can't just completely disrupt a routine. That wouldn't be sustainable. So for me, the way I implemented it was using gaming not as a cool down after I'm done work, but as a transition to coding after work. So for example, instead of me getting home and then sitting down and playing Baldur's Gate 3 for three, four hours and then going to bed, instead I would sit down and play a 15 minute game of Hyper Roll on Teamfight Tactics. Not a way to completely cut gaming out of my life, but a way that I could sit down, comfortably have a game with a set time frame so I know exactly when it's gonna be done. And then afterwards, I'm good. And the thing is by playing that game for 15 minutes, I snap out of work mode and I go into a mindless state of playing games. 
But after that's over, I'm a clean slate. I'm ready to go on any new thing, which makes it much easier for me to actually transition into a coding mindset for the rest of the evening. Because not having a transition period in between you ending work and starting coding isn't sustainable and you're not gonna build a routine that way. Simply because of the fact that if you work eight hours a day and then immediately come home and start coding, which is also work for four hours, where's your off time? Where's your transition? So if you actually wanna replace gaming with coding, you need to develop some sort of routine and consistency. It all comes down to routine and consistency. You wanna learn a new programming language? Routine and consistency. You wanna build the next Facebook? Routine and consistency. You wanna just learn how to build a website from scratch? Routine and consistency. Because so many people undertake the task of coding not understanding that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Here's the thing. If you actually wanna establish a routine where you're replacing gaming with coding, you need to make a very low barrier to entry for coding that is almost, if not easier, than gaming. Gaming's very easy. We turn on whatever system we're using, we click the game button, the game loads, we start playing. It's very, very simple. Coding, there are a couple more steps to actually get it going. So establishing a consistent routine, making sure that you stick with it is the best way to actually make that happen. Because I mean, I'm not saying that you have to quit gaming. I mean, you don't have to quit gaming but it just means that if you're not enjoying gaming, if you're finding it hollow, if you're finding it empty, you're finding it sad, and you find coding enjoyable, well then do less of the thing that's making you unhappy and do more of the thing that is. And that's true for not just gaming or coding, but for anything in life. Stop doing what makes you so unhappy because you know what makes you unhappy and start doing more of the things you enjoy because you know the things you enjoy. Hey, thanks for listening so far. So as promised, keeping in mind all those really valuable things that I just talked about, here are the practical strategies for you to actually replace gaming with coding if you wanna try this out for yourself. The first one, set aside 20 minutes for coding every day. Not an hour, not half an hour, 20 minutes. We need to make this as low barrier to entry as possible. So setting some lofty goal for yourself, like I wanna code for an hour every day, I wanna code for half an hour every day, it's too much because like anything, if you can't consistently sit down and do it, you're not gonna build it as a habit in the long term. So setting 20 minutes, you can take 20 minutes out of your day. So 24 times three, that's how many blocks of time you have to just fit that 20 minutes of coding into. So just do it. And I'll bet you, I will bet you that you start with 20 minutes, but soon enough, it becomes 30 minutes and then it becomes 45 minutes and then it becomes an hour and soon, the actual process of just going and coding isn't hard anymore. It's very easy for you to sit down and slip into a flow state where you can just start coding. And soon enough, ideally, if you end up at a spot like me, you can spend hours on end coding, not because of you feeling empty or you feeling guilty or you feeling like you need this way to unwind, but because you enjoy it so much. And that feeling of losing six hours in a coding project, because you're like, oh, I really wanna build this thing that I just really like and it's really cool. That is such a great feeling to have. And I'll tell you something, it's a lot better than the hollowness and empty feeling I feel whenever I'm playing a game. You spend hours coding and you spend hours learning new programming languages and building new tools and projects and having fun with it. The second one here, use coding to solve a problem that you yourself experience in your own life. This personally comes from the fact that I've seen it before, I've experienced it. So many people, when they start coding, they hype themselves up and they think that the first project that they build has to be the next Facebook. The first project that they build has to be what they eventually sell for a million dollars. So they gotta put all of their time into it. But the thing is, that sort of mentality isn't something that happens for people who actually end up becoming millionaires. The millionaires are people who solve problems at scale. And if coding and software is the method by which you do that, great but you need to shift into a problem-oriented mindset. So if you're just getting into it, build an app that you genuinely need that would solve a problem in your life or make a system that you currently have in your life easier by having that piece of software there. Build an app that you write your grocery list on. Build an app that tracks your mood every day. Do something very simple but actually solves a problem for you. And if you can get into that problem solving oriented mindset, you will be much, much, much more successful in the actual tools you build or companies you build, not just in software, but in business in general. So that's a great place to start. The third one is budget gaming time with your friends or budget gaming time yourself. And when I say budget gaming time, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying don't go cold turkey on gaming and saying I'm gonna cut out all gaming in my life and it's only gonna be coding from here on out. I'm gonna hit my David Goggins. No, no you're not. You know you're not. 
I know you're not. We both know that you're not going to just immediately cut gaming out cold turkey, never touch it again, and then start coding and become the next Mark Zuckerberg. That, that doesn't happen for people. So budgeting actual gaming time with your friends, I play games online virtually with my friends, I have a gaming budget. I have a budget that I use to actually schedule with them because for the most part, when I'm gaming with them, the joy that I'm getting out of it is the social interaction. I'm playing games with my friends. I'm not playing games just for the fun of it. I'm playing games because, well, I want to talk to my friends and gaming is the medium by which I am playing with while I'm talking to them. But I actually have a budget for it, just like finances. So instead of saying, for example, oh, I'm going to spend two hours gaming today. That is my budget. Well, my budget is two games or three games, depending on how long things typically go for. But at least if I know that consistently a game would take, you know, 35 to 45 minutes, or say you're playing Call of Duty and a round takes 10 minutes, you can accurately budget how many games you can successfully fit in within your gaming budget. That's probably one of the most valuable pieces of advice I can give, especially when it comes to replacing gaming with coding, is that to build those routines with consistency, you need to have some level of balance and what you want to do over time is slowly tip the scales away from gaming and more towards coding. And then it'll be easy, just as easy as it was when you were gaming and easily could click on League of Legends and then boom, game's up in less than 30 seconds. It'll be just as easy for you to hop in and start building a tool or application that you actually enjoy. And finally, the most important one, but also the most controversial one, learn to step away from technology sometimes. This, this is true almost in every case, and I, I would die on this hill, honestly. Say for example, like I'm gaming, I have a gaming budget. Well, I have two games budgeted for the day. So when that's done and I'm stepping away from gaming, well, I'm gonna enjoy those two games a lot more. But actually pulling yourself away from technology, removing yourself from these devices, keyword is vices there, you can actually enjoy the time that you're spending on your technology much more which makes the whole process of learning how to code much more enjoyable. Because if you're not using your computer 24 hours a day, then the time that you're actually using it to do something productive is gonna feel so much better. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.